What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Marvel Legends Aven Avengers Infinity War Iron Spider from the Thanos Build-A-Figure series. So what we're going to do now is take a little break, get Spider-Man opened up, and we'll have a better look at the figure inside. So sit tight everyone. And so here we have the Iron Spider posing out of the packaging. Before we get on to the figure, let's actually have a look at his accessories. He does come with the Build-A-Figure piece for Thanos. He comes with Thanos' left leg, which is pretty big in comparison to Spider-Man, and you will see what they look like side by side when we get to Thanos' review. However, that's all Spider-Man comes with an Iron Spider. That's it. He only comes with Thanos' leg. He does not come with any extra hands. Nothing to attach to his back for the Iron Spider's legs. It's just this. So what you see is what you get. So let's actually have a better look at Spider-Man's details. Because that's one place I feel this figure really excels in. And so here we have a better look at the Iron Spider. And I have to say this is a really well done figure. There are a few issues I have with it. And I'll explain more that as we move on. But for the most part he is a solid looking figure. Everything on him with the exception of his head and hands is completely brand new sculpt. I know there have been some people saying it's using the same homecoming body just retweaked. It's actually not. It's really, really impressive that they were able to sculpt an entirely new figure for Spider-Man. Knowing Hasbro, it was a 50% chance they were going to use the homecoming build, but I'm really glad that he got his own unique figure. Like I said, his head is from the Homecoming Spider-Man. That's the only... Th it's really noticeable, seeing as how the texture is the same. I honestly don't have that figure in hand, so I really can't show you guys. But do believe me when I tell you that the head is the same as the Homecoming Spider-Man. And then his suit is actually textured all the way through. I really do like that Hasbro was able to do that. And the paint on him is just really well done. There are a few areas like right here near the symbol where you can see they didn't get the red all the way on. But for the most part, it is really clean and really well done. And I really do like that. Like I was talking about, there are a few minor areas. But other than that... Really solid on the paint apps. We move on to his hands. Unfortunately, the only hands Iron Spider comes with are the Thwip hands. and I really would have liked to see wall crawling hands, fists, just something different. Because I really don't like posing my Spider-Man figures with both Thwip hands. I know what it is. I prefer having maybe a Thwip hand and a fist or wall crawling hands. Nothing I can do about it, but that's the way it is. And like I said, again, really nice texture all throughout his costume. You can see that panel lining is really well done. The panel lines don't have any paint apps, but the fact that they are smooth against the texture does make them pop out. And just once again, that line work is really clean. There's so many chances Hasbro could have screwed this up. So overall, a really nice figure, and he's really well done. Before we continue on, let's actually compare him to other Spider-Man figures you might have in your collection. And just for a quick comparison here, we do have the Iron Spider pose next to the Civil War Spider-Man and the Ultimate Spider-Man. And you can see they are relatively scaled well. Let's actually move one of these Spider-Man figures off so you can see him next to a standard Marvel Legends figure. And here we have Spider-Man next to the Civil War Spider-Man and Deadpool. Just so you can see a size comparison, this Spider-Man is smaller and I really do like that, that compared to all the quote-unquote adults, he's going to be a little shorter now. I don't have the Civil War Spider-Man like I was saying, so I don't have that comparison. Unfortunately, the only one I have is the Civil War Spider-Man and you can see... This one carried over the same shoulder problems that the Homecoming Spider-Man would eventually have where his shoulders just kind of dip down. This one alleviates that. He actually does have shoulders and I'm really glad about that. And I really do like the fact that even though this was probably a concept figure, you can still see some of these influences carrying over to the Iron Spider, which I really do like. Now, at the time, this was a good figure, but we know better now, don't we, everybody? 
With the size comparisons out of the way, let's actually move on to Iron Spider's articulation, because he does have quite a bit. Now, one issue I do have with mine, just like with Iron Man, that head is incredibly loose. There's really nothing I can do to fix that. It doesn't sit on that joint all too well. You can see I'm just barely flicking it, and it wants to rotate like crazy. We do get some really subtle up and down on that ball joint, but because of how loose it is on mine, it doesn't stay up. He does have a hinge in the neck, which he can look back about that far. He looks down that far. Arms on a ball joint go out. Only two about that way, but it is complete vertical, so or complete horizontal, so you don't have to worry about that. Rotates at the shoulder. Swivel at the bicep. He is double jointed at the elbow. It is a stiff joint on mine, but we do get better than 90 degrees. He has a hinge and swivel at the wrist. No problems there. He does have a butterfly joint, and it's stiff on mine, which I don't mind it being stiff, but I do have a fear that it's going to be too tight and those butterfly joints are going to break on me. But he can get his arms across his chest, which I really do like that. He has an ab crunch, which goes back about that far. Goes forward about that far. Waist swivel. Legs go forward and back. They go out quite a distance. I really like the fact that we get a really good split with this Spider-Man figure. Something that a lot of Spider-Man figures have been lacking in the past. He swivels at the thigh. He is double jointed in the knee, although just like with all the other joints on him, it's really stiff. No swivel at the calf, but he does have a hinge in the ankle. Which, because the way they designed his ankle, there's only three settings. There's that, there's that, and then there's that. There's no in-between. At least it's flat foot and back and forward. And then we have forward-facing pin for rocker ankle. So overall, really good articulation on Iron Spider. So what we're going to do now is take a little break, get him posed for my final thoughts, and then we'll wrap up this review. So sit tight, everyone. So here we have the Iron Spider pose for my final thoughts. And overall, I think he's a really nice-looking figure. However, he is missing a lot of essential accessories. Although he does come with a Builder figure piece for Thanos, he doesn't come with any alternate hat. Alternate hands, no alternate head, no legs coming out of his back. I honestly feel like the Infinity War wave is kind of rushed. The past three figures we've had a look at really haven't been anything too special. Iron Spider here is riddled with a lot of nice details. However, he is missing a lot of essential accessories. It is something I can overlook seeing as how he's a really nice looking figure, but I really would have loved some more care into his accessories. With that being said guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, go check out all my other action figure reviews, as well as all my other Marvel Legend videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments. And if it fits in my collection, I'll definitely have a look at it. Until next time guys, I'll see you later. Take care everyone.